the season of testing can i tell you this if it is god you are doing business with before he commits to you destinies before he commits to you anointings and graces you must be tested genesis 22 please from verse 1 we're still looking at the life of abraham and it came to pass after these things remember genesis 12 abraham has an encounter with god he begins his journey 10 chapters later we see him stepping into the next phase it came to pass after these things that god did what tempt some verses will say test abraham what was the test abraham he said behold i am here next verse please he said take now thy son thy only son isaac whom thou lovest take note of lo only and lovest only son whom thou lovest get thee into a land of moriah and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which i will tell you verse 3 here's what the bible says and abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass and took two of his young men with him and isaac his son and clave the wood for the bond offering and rose up and went on to the place which god had told him we'll continue later on but look look at this look at this god tells abraham i want to make you a father of nations i will bless them that bless you cause him that causes you in thee shall all the families be blessed in other words i'm going to make you the landlord of the earth he willed the earth to abraham are we together now and then abraham did not know that as he kept obeying god transiting he would get to a point where god will now say now we are getting to the season where prophecy and destiny is about to be activated but not without a test the bible does not leave us in the dark as to the fact that everything that was happening was a test but abraham did not know it was a test can i tell you this this final phase of your preparation season is the hardest phase for most people ask any great man they will tell you the season of test is a season where you have to obtain grace from god the season of test will test you across three things number one it will test you across trust and integrity you will be tested you will be tested you will be tested your capacity to be a person of integrity will be tested beyond measure number two the second test is the test of patience the test of patience i can tell you this if it is god who is lifting you he will stretch you from pillar to post man of god let me tell you what he will do to you as a great man on fire god loving you your pastor just looks at you and says you are going to be the person opening the gate at the church you look at the potential of your anointing compared to the miracle that just happened before you came and say pastor sorry i hope you know that two among these ten testimonies came directly from me and yet god says go and do it can i tell you this the test of greatness achieves many things among them it must humble you to your lowest otherwise it's not god lifting you some of these insulting derogatory experiences we go through the man of god may not know god is using him to test you nobody knows that it's a test is it's only god it's not like men know if a man tries to test you he's not god it is at the end looking from hindsight you will know that it was not about isaac it was not about abraham it was about god saying for me to commit this kind to you this is where many people fail they fail the test can i tell you this the test of destiny will insult your pedigree the test of destiny will turn you sometimes you look at yourself and say i'm not a fool be careful the moment it starts looking like god is just allowing things to fall your hand like we call it be careful there are people today who would have become mighty men and women of god if they had submitted themselves to cleaning the chair they say no way 
I can't be carrying this heavy prophetic grace. Especially when you are serving and your superiors may not seem to be as gifted as you. Maybe someone is in that phase right now. Listen carefully. I've trained the leaders in this ministry to understand that anything at all God gives you, do it with all your heart. You do not know what season you are stepping into. Are we together? Go and ask many great men. Do you know what Stephen was doing before he became that mighty man? Stephen was part of those who were serving tables. There are many great men today who started by scrubbing the floors of their CEOs. And while they were scrubbing the floors, they would hear discussions happening and they were cleaning all kinds of things. While their contemporaries were saying, I'm too big, they were saying, no, 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 I love the Lord. Father, it's a privilege for me to do what I'm doing. The moment you are too big to be tested, you are also too big to be great or too small to be great. I have told God and I told God this right from before he lifted me no matter what it is that I have to do is in the name of the Lord and I'm serving you I will do it with all my heart I stand before the God of heaven and I'm telling you now if the Lord asks me to drop this leadership and leave everything and go back to be an usher even in Koinonia here I stand by the God of heaven I will do it I know you think I'm not alright but I will do it it's better to be wrong with God let me tell you how you know that the door of greatness is already closing in you the moment what you were doing before you now become too big to do it check yourself go for a retreat quickly some of us as it is today if you hold a broom you will be sick may god forgive you in the name of jesus christ because you see can i be honest with you one of the ways to walk in humility is that occasionally in your life disengage yourself with certain privileges even if it's for a day and you go back to the things you used to do they will administer a measure of humility to keep you balanced because you see as you rise there will be people to serve you protocol you see me coming in and you see all these my people everything and some of you this is what you are looking at when you look at all these things say, oh god i must be like joshua selman not his prayer life not his word life what you want is this one and god says you lie i'm not i'm not you don't cheat me like that you go back and start that school of the spirit the season of testing this is the season where it will look like God is not even answering your prayer I've taught you here as a man of God you can pray for somebody who will go for the crusade and be raising people from wheelchairs and they bring somebody who is suffering from constipation you will almost lay all your hands on the person and nothing happens and the person says i'm disappointed i was told so much about you uh, i i i thought and you say me and god says keep quiet tell him god bless you you say god bless you and he leaves and you feel stupid at a point you say god what is the name of all these things god will send you to go and preach somewhere as soon as you finish you'll be waiting thinking an honorarium is coming they will just carry maybe orange or banana hold it in a leather and say sir may the lord who called you honor you and bless you listen 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 and you are standing there and wondering okay a three days conference and god says accept it quickly and go he's winning you up the lost for things tests most of us miss these seasons because we have an idea that the moment you are gifted the next thing after being gifted is celebration you lie not in god's economy there will be a season of test this is where many people abort destiny and abort greatness they are too big to serve they are too big to pray they are too big to do whatever it is that they do believe what I'm telling you for many years in my life I wanted to buy a car but God prohibited me this is true and at a point I said what is all this one now 
a car that will help me is still this gospel thing the making of the great is painful you are not the only one apostle you don't know what is happening to me you think so how do you think everybody who got here got here it looks you see that season makes it painful and you think it's only you this is why mentorship is powerful because when you see the people sitting at the table of greatness like kung fu masters they laugh at you they say just continue continue you will get here god can give you an assignment and say from today and for the next six months four days out of every seven days you are fasting and from 12 o'clock till 4 you are praying and you say god for what i thought you said i'm a kingdom financier he says that's exactly the training of a kingdom financier god trains you as a kingdom financier like he's training a revivalist you will say god confirm it with speed you will have a dream someone will send you a text god will send another word so that you must do it with the exact word you must fast and you must pray and can i tell you this you will fast for two three months thinking there is a mighty crusade coming nothing will happen till you finish that fasting this is a test i'm explaining this to you because many of you are in this season now i tell you lift up your eyes look beyond the pain your salvation is near test apostle god is calling me to be a kingdom billionaire huh he will not ask you to open an account he will ask you to empty everything in your account only god knows how many times that is the test i know you will cast that voice you say no god doesn't work like that i am telling you he works like that there is a way that god works like that there are demons yes but there is a way that god works you must give everything i've taught you that the price for all of god is all of you god will wait until they pay you arrears for one year he will not wait until they give you a seed it's easy when they dash you money but god will wait until they pay you your arrears and you say take that isaac go to a mountain he can even say you should sow it to someone you don't like a ministry you don't like yours is to obey what do you think being a kingdom financier is just having an account with money and business ideas no sir what do you think being a man of god is just having a gift and a platform to speak uh -uh. for everyone you see who has tasted of greatness there is blood dripping on the altar believe me when i tell you this the only way to get to the throne is to pass through the cross i'm speaking to someone now because you are in a season of your life just help us under the anointing you are in a season of your life where it looks like nothing is happening this is applicable to all men apostle when i sleep i see a vision of a church and god is saying i will be a great man serving the purposes of god but i don't know what is happening why is it that nothing seems to be moving in my life fear not god is working with you let me tell you this if you never get to a point in your life where you don't even know the name of what you are doing it's not god who is training you you get to a point in your life where you say god, what are we doing just tell me the name of what we are doing are you getting what i'm saying now you can get a job of two hundred thousand and a job of eighty thousand and god can tell you go for the job of eighty thousand you say god do you know that i'm taking care of four people he says just go there now you see what i'm saying is not marketable because this is not what many people learn about kingdom greatness sometimes you just learn that oh i i wish i were lying i would have just told you i'm joking but i'm not what i'm saying is very serious and i tell you there are no exceptions to it swallow your pride tonight come to the school of the spirit don't you know in his hands are the keys to eternal life it's a little here a little there and then your day will dawn is that working you changing everything in obedience to christ my brother my sister at this period of your life i want you to hold on the bible says though weeping endures there are times you cry but you still stay 
lord this fast i'm fasting as if i don't even know whether i'm touching my stomach or my back just fast it doesn't kill there are times that you sit down and you are praying and you are saying lord is it that i'm a pastor just encourage me by god says what you are is not your business you just know that you are a child of god and i'm making you become something if you want to claim the blessings of abraham be ready to carry isaac to that mountain we live in a generation that claims people's anointings and refuses their sacrifices anybody that you know who has become great today find out what they did there is always a season of preparation if you see anybody who breaks that rule run away from them they have nothing to offer you i have i tell you sincerely if you see any greatness that does not have a story and a track record of consistency with god there is not much to offer i've cried in my life oh you see me smiling all the time i'm only smiling before you ask god ah, the burden of this ministry the first time we organized crusade as a ministry then just starting we didn't even have money to pay the transport fare brothers and sisters this our generation must reduce this ungodly admiration that erodes the need for process please don't feel insulted i'm only stressing this because i want to pound it into your spirit behind every throne you see behind every throne you see there was a time i prayed for 72 hours non-stop my eyes did not know whether it was morning or night i don't say this to boast in the flesh but i am telling you ladies and gentlemen greatness does not just happen we live in a society that demeans the greatness and the value of people no i've had the honor and the privilege of knowing and being with a few of the fathers of faith in this nation i tell you sometimes when you look at them you can almost see in the spirit blood just dripping like rain on the ground their entire lives have become a drink offering before even business people before you admire people you want to stretch your hands to the sick and they are healed you want to tell someone stand up from a wheelchair and he stands you want to open a church or an assembly and god honors you with people please let me tell you this it is more than just claiming there is a school of the spirit there is a cup you must drink of and a baptism you must be baptized with they came to Jesus and said, can you grant that when you are exalted, we will sit at your left and right. He said, the space is available, but here is the condition. Can you drink of my cup and be baptized? Listen, Moses was a man who had been trained by the Holy Spirit. Do you know Moses was a stammerer? And yet look at the kind of heavy anointing he was carrying. And he was quiet. He didn't prophesy. When the anointing on him, came on 70 elders not children a part of it all none of them could stand and control it yet that's what one man was carrying and he was quiet training gives you stability it gives you stamina when you are in the school of the spirit especially say as a minister he will teach you to know when to speak he will teach you to know when to be quiet it's not everything that offends you say people are offending me in this church you've not gone through the school of the spirit when you go through he teaches you stability why do they do trainings for people before they promote them even in organizations am i right on that that before you promote people they call them and they have specialized trainings question what do they teach them there that they've not taught them before you are taking a director or something to become an agm and you sometimes they even go for retreats our politicians in this nation go for retreats what are they saying there the testing process is very difficult God will test everything he will be using you to do one day you will pray and it will look like the prayer is not answered and God will watch you after you have preached and said there is nothing my God cannot do you will feel as if his headache whether it's from the back of your head or the front you may not be able to explain 
and like Paul you will lay your hands I'm sorry I'm not giving us a lot of scriptural references I'm hurrying up I besought him thrice that this thorn be taken away from me and he says my grace is sufficient for you for my my strength is made perfect in your weakness how do you help the poor when you never become like that there is a man of God that God gave an assignment for one or two years that he should leave all his money and everything and go and live somewhere in this nation and he went and lived you would think he does not have anything he was the sacrifice in the course of that journey he received a burden for that land such a powerful evangelical burden and it changed his life on easy lies the head that wears the crown your season of preparation discovery development and refining and then the season of testing my prayer for you is that you will not give up during your season of test man of God hear me everything God told you he will still do that man of God that woman of God you are you don't look like it the Bible says it does not